Hi, let's talk about wind. We all know what wind is, right? You know when the sun hits the earth and its heat distributes, but not evenly, causing the movement of air currents. Places like the coast, desert, get more wind because of the specific heat capacity where the heating is more uneven. But that's only the gist of it. Well, how do you use it? Hey class, it's only the start. Don't fall asleep on me now. Earlier I said that energy starts from the sun, then turns into wind, then spins a turbine, and we have light. From earlier times, simpler times, might I say, people were utilizing the power of the wind. For example, farmers and small houses could rely on windmills to power their lifestyle, extracting roughly 3 kilowatts per day. Nowadays, windmills can stand 30 times larger and produce into the megawatts. They are long and constructed to capture the most wind, but due to stress of strong wind being so high, the blades wear and require a lot of maintenance, which is often pricey. Also, the only effective wind speeds that can be extracted are 6 to 14 meters per second, and only one-fourth of that energy can be converted into electrical. The power depends on the speed and area of the blades, which is this equation here. Wind turbines are great. For the most part, its energy is free, it's inexhaustible, and definitely the cleaner option. Good for remote islands too. However, the sound and the sight are not the prettiest. The question is, is the cost to build and manage all of this while only producing 25% of electricity really worth it? In Canada, 2% of energy needs are met by these mills, but according to Project 2025, they plan to expand it to 20%. That's all for now, brought to you by a collection of atoms known as Lynn.